So I was playing Devil May Cry 5 the other day, and it's a great game. There's lots to love here, like the fun combat, the great graphics, the amazing soundtrack, the humor. But even with all those things I like about the game, what stands out the most to me in Devil May Cry 5 is, without a doubt, the opening sequence. There's just so much to love about it. The super smooth slow-mo, Nero flying around and shooting demons while Ali Edwards is killing it with the lyrics to Devil Trigger in the background. It's just peak. And don't get me wrong, it still is an amazing game, but that opening sequence has always stood out to me as one of my favorite parts of this game. So why not waste 8 minutes of my day and let's talk about video game opening sequences. Who cares? Me apparently. The opening sequence is one of those key moments that should stand out when you first play a game. It's what sets the tone and feel of a game, how the rest of it will go. It's the part of the game that tells you, yup, this is what you're playing, go nuts. The opening sequence is usually one of the first things the player sees when they get past the menu screen. But not every game has an opening sequence. Many games straight up just don't have one at all. During the earlier days of gaming, many games just showed their name and oh, you're already playing it. But nowadays, there's many types of opening sequences. Some openings are playable, some are just cutscenes. Some openings are short and sweet, and some are very long. The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is a great example of an opening sequence done well. We first see Link waking up in the Shrine of Resurrection and get introduced to the Sheikah Slate. We get some clothes and Link sees sunlight for the first time in 100 years. Zelda tells us our main objective and the only thing left to do is to go out into Hyrule. So you climb out and exit out of the cave. And as you run up the hill, those piano notes start playing and it all leads to... Title Drop Link stands at the edge of the mountain, looking out at this huge new world you can explore. I genuinely cannot think of any other way this genre-defining game could have started. Spider-Man PS4 also does a great job at a short and sweet opening sequence that drops you right into gameplay immediately. We enter Peter Parker's room, see his web shooters, his signature mask, and newspapers of all the villains hanged up on the wall. Peter's alarm goes off and he wakes up to a police broadcast of an active crime scene. He gets dressed, ignores his rent bills, and jumps out the window to catch up to the active crime scene. The game then slows down and... Well, I gotta see what this button does. You are now swinging through the air as freaking Spider-Man. First thing you learn to do in the game is web swing, which is like what you're gonna do most of the time. And it is the best way this game could have possibly started. It puts you straight into gameplay and teaches you the basics in the first couple of minutes. Couple that with the smooth movement, the graphics, and you got yourself a great opening right there. Now, let's talk about my favorite game of 2022 and the winner of the Best Multiplayer Game Award at the Game Awards, Splatoon 3! What? What? What the right. fuck? Splatoon 3's campaign executes its opening in a very interesting way. You see, back when Splatoon 1 came out for the Wii U, rest in peace, one of the things a lot of the critics and players pointed out was the weak story mode. I mean, it was fine, it does its job, but it's pretty short and repetitive and you could only use default weapon where there were many other weapons you could use in the multiplayer. Splatoon 2, however, fixed a lot of what the audience was complaining about. The mechanics were more interesting, you could now use other weapons aside from the default splatter shot, and it was longer than Splatoon 1's campaign. But it was basically the same story in both games. DJ Octavio stole the great sapfish and we need to get it back, cool you beat him. See what I mean? So when Splatoon 3 got announced, a lot of people were curious as to what the story mode was going to be about. So then months later during a Nintendo Direct, they dropped a trailer for the story mode and oh my god. It looked great! It looked completely different from the last two games! This is gonna be great! So, on September 9th when the game released, I launched the game and prepared for the best Splatoon campaign ever. This is exactly the same as the last two games, what the hell happened? All that excitement went straight into confusion. What was all the footage from the last trailer? Did they scrap that? Is DJ Octavia really the villain AGAIN? Where are the Squid Sisters, cause clearly they're not here. But I just kept playing, and after 4 levels and a boss fight almost identical to both prior games, I got my answer. <laughs> Wow. 
Nintendo, you smart pieces of shit. Everything prior to this was self-aware. They knew people disliked how repetitive the last two games were, so they said, hey, you know what they really like? The same thing again, just to then pull the rug out at the end. Nintendo fooled us, and then they delivered one of the best shooters ever. And hey, since we're talking about shooters, we might as well talk about... Ultra Kill is a hold up. Let me just read the Steam page. Ultra Kill is a fast-paced, ultra-violent retro FPS combining the skill-based style scoring from character action games with unadulterated carnage inspired by the best shooters of the 90s. So basically, it's Doom Eternal, but you smoked every single type of crack possible. Ultra Kill's opening is the most recent out of all the games I've shown, and it is pretty unique. You see, in most mother games, when you first start, you get put in the menu screen, and from there you start a new game, and then the opening begins. But in Ultra Kill, when you first boot up the game, you're seeing the boot up process of a machine turning on for the first time. From there, you can set all your settings to your liking, then proceed. You're a machine named V1. Mankind is dead, blood is fuel, hell is full. and then you're dropped in a quick tutorial. But that's not the reason I like this one so much. That would be unfair. Other games also put you into the game without even showing the title card. However, Ultra Kill has the best buildup. Yeah, that's it. Anyways, opening sequences are one of those things that when done well, they always stick with me throughout my entire experience with a game. But your favorite game doesn't need to have a god tier opening sequence or have nice graphics just to be a special game to you. If you're already calling it your favorite game, then that's more than enough for it to be special to you. No one can say otherwise. But hey, those are just my thoughts. Do you agree with my favorites? Hell, what are your favorite game openings? It'd be great to hear your thoughts in the comments. Well gamers, I'm afraid I gotta go. I need to figure out how to unclog my trash bin before someone finds out.